One of the weirder great movies ever made. This is Powell and Pressburger's A Matter of Life and Death. What is this movie about? Let me help you understand it a little bit and we'll dissect it as best we can in the few minutes we have coming up next. <laughs> the earth, our earth, moving around in its place, part of the pattern, part of the universe. Reassuring, isn't it? A Matter of Life and Death is a 1946 film by Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger. This movie was also titled Stairway to Heaven, and I believe is also given the title A Question of Life and Death, so you may see it in different forms. The movie stars David Nevin, one of my favorite actors, Kim Hunter as his romantic interest, the great Roger Livesey, who was in a lot of Pal and Pressburger movies as well, and a number of other interesting or good actors like Raymond Massey. In spite of all that star power, the real star here is, I think, Michael Powell's vision. This movie is an exquisite artwork. It is made by a master artist. You can watch a hundred movies and watch this one, and this one will look completely weird, completely different. It's dreaminess, it's fantasy-like sequences, and definitely avant-garde and expressionistic sorts of things going on in this movie, especially with the shot making and special effects within the shots, are really what makes this movie great unusual and different. A number of Americans, I would at least think, have seen It's a Wonderful Life many times, and if you see it, A Matter of Life and Death, you feel sort of the cultural zeitgeist around World War II, the questions of the afterlife, angels' involvement, God, and what does my life mean? These sorts of questions come up in A Matter of Life and Death and It's a Wonderful Life. See, there's some, a little bit of overlap in these movies, and this movie in particular is really interesting in diagnosing and giving you some ideas of what it was like to be alive and to dream of these questions about life, death, and the afterlife circa 1945-46. Basic plot summary is that David Niven is a British Air Force pilot who is going down, going to crash. While he's crashing, he talks to an American woman on the radio. They have a long conversation. They kind of fall in love during that conversation. He crashes. He wakes up on a beach. He thinks he's dead, but oh, he's not really dead, supposedly. He seems to start to have visions or... He's being visited by people from the afterlife, and he's going to be put on trial later in the movie for not actually dying in the crash as he's supposed to. We see scenes there in black and white of what looks like heaven or the afterlife where he should be, and this place hasn't aired in a thousand years. There hasn't been a lost soul in a thousand years, but he is the one unusual lost soul, supposedly, who should have died, but hasn't. This movie is a strange conglomeration of a number of topics. One of them it's definitely about is whether the afterlife, ghosts, visions of God, visions of the angels or saints, anything like that is all in our head based on the organ of perception that we all have a human brain or whether they might actually exist outside of that organ of perception. I don't think the movie settles on either one and you can take it either way or both. The ambiguity is here all over the movie. Does the brain dream up scenarios about the afterlife? You could read the movie that way and say this movie is probably from the very beginning or nearly the beginning, all in this character's head. Or you could say some of it's in the character's head or you could say what's going on in the black and white world might actually be happening. The movie is uncertain about whether there's anything beyond the material universe. In fact, it opens with a star field, a long discussion of what's out there in the universe and the cosmos, and then it goes down to Earth. Question thus being, is any religious doctrine or dogma correct in the imagined or fantastical black and white afterlife that this movie will have? It brings together a number of religions, the whole globe, is in this depiction of the afterlife. So it's unclear whether the movie is affirming the unity of world religions or whether it's saying it's all a delusion in the head of this character. That sort of uncertainty about whether things are real or not in terms of the supernatural or religious dogma is really important because as the century goes on, we head into the 21st century, neurology, neuroscience, studies of the brain, still are uncertain about this but we know a lot more than we did and we know that the brain as an organ of perception is a powerful critter in creating a reality for us and the movie might be imagining that for the soldier along with that the soldier has perhaps ptsd the aftermath of the war this is a movie talking about british soldiers coming home from world war ii and it's asking gigantic questions of the psychology of these soldiers plus perhaps everyone else in England. One of those questions is, 
why am I alive when thousands, hundreds of thousands are dead? Again, the aftermath of World War II, existential questions, why didn't I die? Maybe the question in the soldier's head, why am I still alive? What's keeping me alive? Why should I be alive? What is life after death, especially when I lost all kinds of friends and family members in the war? It's a Wonderful Life is handling this sort of question in similar but also different ways as a purely American movie. A Matter of Life and Death is asking this question on the basis of this British soldier, but also on the basis of England or Britain itself in the world. Here are the soldiers that stand in for Great Britain is on trial by the world and America is leading the trial here and as the prosecution. So the other question up besides the question of is it all in our head or not, the fantasies in this movie is, is England or Britain justified in world affairs continuing to go on and should Britain still have rights? Should it still have liberalism, the, the policies of free speech and freedom of religion? In one sense, the trial going on in the movie is a prosecution of maybe the British Empire in world affairs. It's a strange mix of the question of the individual perception and is it skewed or not? Is it delusional or not? And the same thing, is Great Britain delusional or not? Was it delusional when it had an empire should it be on trial now after World War II? One could read this movie as political propaganda through and through after World War II, the Anglo-British alliance between, well, America, the United States, and Great Britain comes up. You have post-World War II, Cold War stuff, and the continuation of the English Empire through the American state. Well, here in this movie, you have the romance between a British man and American woman, and they're coming together. Whenever you see two characters like that who are types of two nations coming together that may imply the unity the political social unity of both nations as this movie might be doing circa 1946 thus america and britain are supposed to be aligned at this time politically another question coming up is how do we live after world war ii and you have the law persecuting prosecuting these characters especially the, the main character at the heart of the movie on the other hand, there's love, and can he fall in love, and can that change him and enhance him? So the law versus love, the tortures of war, the memories of it. I participated in it. Why didn't I die? Did I do wrong? That's the legal side of things, perhaps. The love side is we have a future. There's me and you, babe. And in your arms, I can love life and become a whole and rich person. That sort of law versus love theme is all over all kinds of stories forever. But here in 1946, it's potent because this movie definitely declares itself as a World War II movie and a post-World War II movie. And the question of what do we do now after World War II come up in this movie all over the place. What do you think of A Matter of Life and Death? Let us know in the comments. You'll love David Niven like I do. <laughs> Please let us know what you think of this weird movie, interesting shots, other things. Please subscribe to the channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.